Good morning. Welcome to the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. My name is Gordon Ritchie. My pronouns are he and him. Karen Mills and I uh, will be your service leaders this morning. We are also the co-conductors of our church choir, Coriolis. Our minister, Reverend Rosemary Morris, is with us, but her role today is as a member of our choir. This morning is our annual service of carols and lessons. We certainly do hope that you feel welcome here, here in the sanctuary and online. We recognize that everyone here has a role to play to help build this community. We give thanks to all those uh, who work on behalf of, the, of our community every day. I would especially like to acknowledge all of our volunteers this morning, our greeters, our ushers, our musicians, our coffee makers, our spectacular tech team, uh, those who are online and those who are here in the sanctuary. My thanks to you all. Now, uh, for those of you here in the sanctuary, you should be receiving a little holly leaf. They are coming around as we speak. So make sure that you do have one. Uh, you'll also need a, um, a pen as well. And for those of you who are with us online, you might want to have a little piece of paper and a pen available so that you can take part in our little ritual as well. You'll see over to my right, we have what we are now referring to as our wishing tree. Uh, this will be part of our services for the next two Sundays as well as our Christmas Eve service. During the service this morning, I would like you to think of one word, one word that is very important for you, a word that gives you meaning, that gives you purpose, that inspires you. And during the service, I would like you to write that one word on your little holly leaf. And then later on in the service, you'll be invited to come up and we'll hang our words on our wishing tree. So as I said, we'll be doing this over the next two weeks and as well as Christmas Eve. Well, it is the Christmas season, and yes, we have announcements. A lot of announcements, so we'll have everybody come on down. I know Jennifer has an announcement. I know um, Oksana has an announcement, and Sarah is here as well. And Meryl. And, and, and Good morning, everybody. Um, I can introduce myself to some of you. Uh, my name is Sarah McEwen, and I love to sing at UCE, but my home congregation is Westwood. And I'm here today to tell of a sad passing of a wonderful Unitarian life. Marge Foth passed away last week. Um, she was at the U of A hospital for heart surgery, and she did not survive the surgery. A group of us met at the church yesterday to take care of Westwood business, and Marge, Marge's name came up so often. Particular passions of hers were lay chaplaincy and music. She was a shining light in my Unitarian Universalist life. Well, to continue the somber mood of announcements, um, on the 11th, which is next Sunday, we will be hosting another Amnesty International Right for Rights event. Um, I say somber because Amnesty International each year has a letter writing campaign focused around the United Nations International Day for Human Rights, which is the 10th of December. And they focus our attention on this year nine prisoners of conscience, people who have been uh, unjustly imprisoned and punished, and some have died. And the, the effectiveness of this letter writing campaign every year is phenomenal when thousands of letters flood the inbox or the incoming mail of a prime minister or a minister of justice in some foreign country things happen and prisoners are freed so next week all of the materials will be spread out on a table for you quite effortlessly you can write a letter the address the envelope the information needed to make a meaningful letter is all provided and we'll ask 
that there be more coffee and cookies available to keep your keep up your energy uh, from 11:30 to one o'clock. Invite friends because we are posted internationally on the um, uh, Amnesty International website as a site for right for rights. The other thing that I want you to be aware of is that Blue Christmas is happening this year on the 16th. We will gather together. Reverend Rosemary will do a very heartfelt and um, sympathetic service for people who find Christmas especially hard emotionally. Um, afterward, we're serving comfort food, soup, bread, and pie. So if you would like to make a contribution to that meal, there's a sign-up sheet in the foyer. If you would like to come that night, stir the soup pots and dish up the pie, um, you can sign up for that. And if you yourself are feeling a bit challenged to muster that glorious, happy, happy Christmas feeling that people seem to expect, or if you know someone who's having a very hard time, invite them to come and join us for the evening. Now let's have some happy announcements. <laughs> Not really happy, but it's semi-happy. <laughs> um, good morning, I'm Lynn Turvey, and I'd like to bring you up to date on the work of your ministerial transition team. If you recall at uh, the November 6th congregational meeting, nine members were elected to develop and implement a process to determine if Reverend Rosemary should become our settled permanent minister. Uh, just to refresh you, uh, those nine members are Donna Hammer, Beth Jenkins, Maida Zetareko, John Pater, Anne-Marie Harder, Gloria Krenbrink, Susan Rattan, Louise Cherich, and me as chair. What is critical to this process is getting congregational input and ideas so that the transition team has a sound basis for any recommendations that uh, will be voted on in the new year, hopefully around the end of February or early, early March. So our plan is to host uh, small group facilitated sessions to get that input. Um, those would be on January 8th and 15th after Sunday services in person and on Zoom. But to properly prepare for January, we need uh, a good idea now as to how many people want to participate and when. And we're hoping for, you know, groups of six to eight uh, people, as many groups as, as necessary. Um, and if there's a, an overwhelming response, um, we will create other groups on perhaps on different days. Um, so Louise and Anne Marie have sign up sheets ready for you after the service to note down your prefer preferred dates. And Zoomers, please note your preferences in the chat and our recorder will uh, capture that information for us. Um, you can also tell us if neither of those dates, if you're interested, but neither of those dates will work for you. And we will certainly come up with some workable alternatives to get your input. I just wanna say that this is a very exciting and important time in the life of this church. And your transition team wholeheartedly encourages you to participate in this process. Thank you. And something fun for all of you fun seekers. Um, I'm inviting each of you to participate as part of the friendly face of our church. I have a sign up sheet for people who would like to greet, which basically is big smiles and welcoming people and also ushering every day or every Sunday from January to April. So I hope to be besieged by people afterwards. So um, looking forward to the rush. Thank you. And a special thank you to our uh, resident seamstress, Yvonne Miro, who has just completed all these beautiful double-sided festive stoles that are making their debut this morning. <laughs> I know. 
It's tartan and it's cozy. I got the tartan one, go figure. Oh. And Michelle Vandermolen, who helped me almost every single day. And uh, had a couple of other little elves as well. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle, as well. All right, yes, there is a lot happening in the church. Uh, do check out your email newsletter as well for more information. Oksana? Oksana, did you have an announcement as well? Yes, and one more. Uh, just another fun quick announcement. We're coming up to our mitten tree service, which is so much fun. Uh, and we're having a little meeting after church today right here in the sanctuary. Uh, for anyone who'd like to share how, uh, if they have any ideas or how it's done in the past. It, if you've been involved in any way, please just stay for a few minutes. Thank you. The Unitarian Church of Edmonton is a liberal, religious, multi-generational congregation and community. We celebrate a rich mosaic of free-thinking, spiritual-questing individuals joined in common support and action. We welcome diversity, pursue the common good, and work for justice. We believe in the compassion of the individual heart, the warmth of community, and the search for meaning in our lives. We are one of two Unitarian churches who gather with gratitude on Treaty 6 territory. A treaty is an inheritance, a responsibility, and a relationship. May we be good neighbors to one another, good stewards to our planet, and good ancestors to all our children. As we begin our service, I would ask that you make sure that any electronic devices that you have with you are either silenced or turned off. May we be reminded here of our highest aspirations and inspired to bring our gift of love and service to the altar of humanity. May we know that once again, we are not isolated beings, but are connected in mystery and miracle to the universe, to this community and to each other. I would like to invite Mitch up to read our opening words. There is Light by Eric Williams. In the beginning, there was light, infinite and expansive, flowing out from an unseen center. Throughout creation, there is light, from the steady sun, the glowing moon, the flashing meteor, the twinkling stars, and the auroras dancing in the northern skies. Within each part of creation, there is light, slowed down and held close by every cell and molecule, by each atom and element. Within you, there is light. The same light as the source, the same radiance that is in all creatures.
The text that you just heard was written by our very own Reverend Audrey Brooks. We have a responsive reading for our chalice lighting. Uh, choir, you are welcome to turn around and read that if you like. Otherwise, it might be a little challenging for you. There are four stanzas. I will read the first. Actually, I'm going to read all of them, and I would invite you to join in with me on reading the second and the fourth stanza. And I've invited Sarah to come forward and light our chalice and also to light our candle for the people of Ukraine. We light this chalice to affirm that new light is ever waiting to break through to enlighten our ways. That new truth is ever waiting to break through to illumine our minds. And that new love is ever waiting to break through to warm our hearts. May we be open to this light and to the rich possibilities that it brings us. Thank you, Sarah. Our first hymn this morning is number 238, Within the Shining of the Star. For those here in the congregation, I invite you to rise as you are willing and able. And for those of you online, the text will be coming up on your screen. We invite you to sing along with us. Let's join in singing Within the Shining of a Star.
expectancy and celebration, let us hold on to the ideal of peace. Even though wars rage around the world and sometimes in our hearts, we recognize that peace arrives gently and to an open heart. We light the candle of peace to remind us that it is with the softness of a dove's wing that peace descends upon us. We have lit the candle of peace. At this time of year, we hear a lot about giving and generosity, uh, but that's something that we actually celebrate in this congregation all year long. And striving to have a more generous spirit is something that we all, I think, work hard to do. Each month, as part of that learning, we donate half of the unidentified contributions to an organization or a cause outside of our walls, acknowledging that there is a lot of need in the world and that we can and should help where we can. And so uh, this is a little bit different. I'm not sure that we've ever done this before, but we are have chosen for this month to share our abundance with the minister's discretionary fund. That is a fund that Reverend Rosemary can use when um, people come to her seeking help, they're having challenging times, um, they just may need that little bit of extra for bus tickets or to tide them over through a couple meals, um, and are just needing some help to alleviate some of their, their personal struggles. And so that will be uh, our collection um, for this next month. So as you are um, sharing your abundance, our ushers will come around to collect that right now, and then we will sing from you, I receive. you all for your generous spirits. Another way that we show our generosity and our care for our community, both large and small, is by lighting candles of care and connection. As we heard from our announcements, there's a lot going on. And this is typically a time of year that stirs up a lot, sometimes good, sometimes a little painful, um, and sometimes just really busy. And, and so, you know, that little extra bit of care and a little bit of time to reflect and slow down for a moment is sometimes really precious in a week. And so I invite you to do that now. If you have something that you would like to acknowledge with a candle, a care, a concern, something that's on your mind or heart, I invite you to come along the side, pick up a taper, light a candle there and extinguish it in the water. And then, uh, if you can fit, we're a little crowded today, I'll maybe move. You can either go out this side or come right back here and go around. We'll just keep things flowing that way. So please now come forward if you'd like to light a candle.
Light one last candle for those joys, cares, sorrows, and concerns that we just might not be ready to make public yet or acknowledge yet. And also for all those who might need some light in their life. reading now by Gary Kowalski. Gary is a UU minister who often looks to science um, for his explanations in the world and understanding how things work and inspiration as well. Um, but this is a little bit of a different reading for him. It's called Christmas Eve Candlelight Meditation. Maybe if we could just have the side lights turned down a little bit, I think that would help the mood. In this moment of half light, half shadow, the glow of candlelight and starlight, we are able to look out upon this world not with eyes of day, but with another kind of vision, the illumination of faith, not sight, a twilight where edges soften, harsh outlines begin to be gentle, and the colors start to fade. No more white or black, red or yellow, but one common race of humankind, and peace descends on all. In this half light, the familiar becomes strangely unfamiliar. What we thought we knew seems more wonderful and sacred. Our lives, the people who share our world, the things we took for granted seem more precious, more beloved. And goodwill is a presence we start to sense, palpable like a pulse, the heartbeat of a great organism, a world praying in unison for a kinder earth, a more humane future. Spirit of candlelight, be with us when this night has come and gone. 
and in the harsh combustion of events, kindle these friendly lights to guide us on our path. May it be so. Sophia Lyon Fawes writes, For so the children come, and so they have been coming. No angels herald their beginning. No prophets predict their future courses. No wise men see a star to show where to find the babe. Yet each night a child is born is a holy night. Some may ask, where and how will this new life end? Or will it end? Each night a child is born is a holy night, a time for singing, a time for wondering, a time for worshiping. Many new parents within the Unitarian Universalist faith community decide to publicly acknowledge the birth 
of their child by having a child dedication service. There is a ritual entitled Blessings of the Elements, written by Bill Neely, which is used at many of these services. The ritual begins by celebrating the wonder of this birth, the sacredness of life, and the love that has always and will always hold them. He continues to say that they are beings of spirit and body, tied to the ancestors in breath and to all life in form. And as they breathe in the air of this sacred space of our faith, they are blessed with nature's elements. These elements will surround this child in one form or another, wherever they go in life. And with this act of blessing, it is prayed that throughout their days, they will know their life as sacred, special, a gift to the world. The child is then blessed with the warmth coming from the flame of the chalice. May the fire bless you with passion and energy. May you find callings that feed your spirit, serve the holy, and kindle kindness and compassion in the world. And may all be warmed by the unfolding life that will spark goodness in the world again and again. We bless you with air. May air bless you with deep breaths and deep peace. When you need rest and renewal, may the ancient air fill your young body with wisdom of just this moment, a moment that is free of worry, full of life, and always there for you. We bless you with earth, with dirt, with mud. May this blessing of earth remind you to keep playing on her even as you treat her with love and care. In your play on the earth and in your care for her, may you be blessed with muddy knees and filthy clothes that no washer can clean and earth under your fingernails and dirt behind your ears and mud between your toes that after such when you take a bath that night, the bathtub needs a bath. For each day when it is that, when that is the case, you'll know that you've had a good, blessed day on and with the earth. We bless with these flowers the name that has been given to you, the body that holds your life, your mind that will grow and change. As these flowers transform from seed to bud, to blossom, so too will you transform in ways we know and in ways we can't. In all the changes in your unfolding life, may you know the timeless beauty of your spirit and the internal love that always holds you. What a way to start a life. Can you imagine what would happen if a child was reminded of these things every day of their life. Could you imagine the impact that would have on this child as their life unfolds? Now I'm curious, how many of you have an affirmation, a blessing, a prayer that you say to yourself every morning? Yeah? Yeah? Cool? Good. Well, I have one that I say every morning. It's by Marcus Aurelius. When you arise in the morning, think of what a precious privilege it is to be alive, to breathe, to think, to enjoy, to love. Here's another one for you. A beautiful day begins with a beautiful mindset. The moment you start acting like life is a blessing, I assure you, it will start to feel like one. Imagine what would happen if each of us started our day with this positive intent. Imagine the effect on this beloved community. Imagine the ripple effect of this love, this joy, 
this compassion. The winter solstice, the longest night of year, is fast approaching. It's considered by many as a time of introspection. May we embrace the darkness and take time to acknowledge and give thanks of our many blessings. May we be that blessing. Our next hymn is number 55, Dark of Winter. I invite you to join in singing and I invite you to rise as you're willing and able as we join in singing hymn number 55, Dark of Winter. Let's enter into a time of quiet. As we prepare to decorate our wishing tree, I trust that you have all written a word on your leaf. Louise has a reading for us. This will be followed by a moment of silence. When Karen begins to play, you are invited to come forward and place your leaf on our wishing tree. Louise, if you would. <clears throat> this is a Christmas Eve prayer by Sarah Eileen Lawal. Gods and goddesses of darkness and light, spirit of life and love, we come together to awaken ourselves to the joy of Christmas, to the miracles of life, the birth of a baby, the rise of the sun once more, the magic of this earth, of Mother Nature herself, the love of one another. This Christmas myth calls us to remember, to remember that the ordinary can become extraordinary, to remember that any child, our own children, can become great prophets, teachers, leaders of nations, saviors even, not of souls, but of lives, working to end the ills and suffering in our world. This is our prayer. We give thanks for our many blessings. We are reminded to share our blessings with as many people as possible, to consider that even the smallest gift, the smallest effort, can make a difference in someone's life and in the world. <clears throat> this is our prayer. We give thanks for our many blessings. We are reminded to share our blessings with as many people as possible, to consider even the smallest gift, the smallest effort can make a difference in someone's life. For this is the season of giving. 
This Christmas myth reminds us that the tradition of giving gifts symbolizes divinity. When we give, we honor the divine in each other. We acknowledge the common link among us all, the common ancestral blood we all share, the blood that is meant to unite us once and for all. This is our prayer. We pray for peace, that war may end. We pray for food, that none may go hungry. We pray for forgiveness, that our world may begin to heal. And we pray for dignity and worth, respect and love, liberty, justice, and equality for all. But this prayer alone is insufficient. We pray knowing that this prayer holds the thought in the forefront of our mind. This prayer focuses our energy on the needs of the world. But we know that this prayer also requires action. And with this very prayer, we resolve to act to seize the moment, to seize our own power. This Christmas myth reminds us that this moment is precious. This moment is holy. This moment is powerful. This moment is love. This moment is full of hope and possibility. This moment is all we need. This is our Christmas prayer. Let us enter silence together.
A good friend of mine sent me the following text. It seemed very appropriate for this morning. Lakota author and activist Doug Goodfeather is committed to sharing Indigenous wisdom and practices with non-Native audiences in a way to help heal humanity. He writes that no matter what our circumstances, gratitude is always with us. He writes, each and every morning offers us a chance to start new, fresh, to begin again. Each morning when we wake, should we choose to listen, is a message from the Creator to remember the privilege we were given of waking up. It's a reminder to get up and prepare ourselves to honor ourself, to go out into the world, to connect with Mother Earth and the hearts of other beings, to inspire and to encourage those who cross our paths, and most importantly, to enjoy life. Gratitude and generosity are similar virtues, but they differ in that gratitude is an internal characteristic and generosity is our external expression of our sense of gratitude. Basically, gratitude is how we feel and generosity is how we express that feeling in the world. When we engage with the world from a place of gratitude, it's the difference between trying to make something happen and allowing something to happen. The defining difference between effort and effortlessness is the virtue of gratitude. But why is gratitude such a core concept of joy, contentment, and well-being in our life? The ancestors tell us there are two primary reasons. The first is that a person cannot exist in a place of fear and true gratitude at the same time. The second is that gratitude is the doorway to a divine intuition allows us to be guided by our connection with the Creator. Gratitude moves stagnant energy where we're, when we're feeling stuck in life. A simple act of practicing gratitude disrupts negative thoughts and changes our mindset to see the world in a positive way. Not only are we more attracted to others when we are living a life of gratitude, but the most Ordinary things in life can become extraordinary, creating a fuller, more beautiful expression of our life. You've probably heard the old saying, things don't happen to us, things happen for us. Gratitude is the foundation of that adage. It means that our mindset has to be that the universe is generally conspiring to work in our favor. I'm going to repeat that. It means that our mindset has to be that the universe is generally conspiring and working in our favor. I conclude by rewriting the words of Sophia Lyon Fawes. For so we come to a new day. May angels herald the new morn, should we, hear to, should we choose to hear them. May prophets inspire us on our way. May sages guide us through the night. And may each day and each night be a time for worshiping, a time for wondering, and a time for singing. May it be so, blessed be. And so it's time to sing. This next song, I believe, has one of the best tenor lines. <laughs> so all you tenors and wannabe tenors, have at her. For all of you online, Please join in for all of us here in the sanctuary. I will ask you to rise as you are willing and able as we join in singing angels we have heard on high. Wow. 
number 231, 231. Tell the coffee had fully kicked in for that hymn. <laughs> Just before we extinguish our flame and have our closing words, I wanted to acknowledge that that beautiful song that you heard when a child is born was the world premiere of a Gordon Ritchie original. And it's dedicated to his sister, Catherine, who I think is watching. So Catherine, thank you very much for sharing your brother and your Christmas present with us. <laughs> I'm gonna invite Sarah forward now to extinguish our candle. And while she does so, I'll read some words by Jennifer Grayson. Universal mystery, guide us away from the desire to shine light in all the corners. Teach us to embrace the night, for without the darkness, we never see the stars. A benediction from Tom Shod. Night has fallen, stars beckon in an indigo and velvet sky. Somewhere, a baby is being born. The world lazes in love of goodness while glory stream from heaven afar. So be not afraid. And be of good cheer, the hopes and fears of all the years have been met. So rest beside the winding road and hear the angels sing. We'll close with a postlude and then invite you to join in singing Carry the Flame. Also a piece at the very end that I think you might recognize, and if you'd like to join in singing, please do. <laughs>
Thank you.